Hello, hello. I logged on just one minute early because I want to try and do something really quick. So hang on. Hang on just a second. Oh, I did it. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Shelly here with Shelly Can Help. Thanks for joining me. Do me a favor, don't leave. I'm gonna give you the eight steps that I have used and developed and practiced in my life since my husband had a massive heart attack in 2014. So these are steps that I do without thinking about them. And I know a lot of you might be starting from zero and might this might be a brand new journey for you. So I wanna to talk to those people. And if you are an expert at healthy eating and or you have been following me on my journey for years now, I think this is just a really good refresher because food is a decision we make multiple times a day. So we can get lackadaisical, we can forget, we can make bad choices. And so just having a refresher, no matter how elementary it is, is still a really good refresher. So without further ado, we are going to um, get started. I'm just gonna for 30 seconds tell you who I am and then I'll dive right in. Uh, my name is Shelly and I live in the North Texas area, but I am a nutrition chef that does not cook in a restaurant. All I do is cook for my very lucky husband because he gets fed very, very well, but it is not just because I love, always loved healthy cooking. He almost died. And when that happened, I decided that we needed to change what we were eating. But as I was going on Google and learning all the things, I got very frustrated. I'm sure so many of you can relate to that. If you can, put something in the comments. Oh, there's someone from Florida. Hi, coffee chat girl. Thank you for tuning in. Um, but yeah, so I changed what we were doing, but Google was frustrating for me because there was some contradictory information out there. I'm putting my glasses on so I can read the comments as we go. This is a very rare occasion that I am not in my kitchen. So I almost don't know how to act like I can actually see comments and everything. So when we cleaned up our diet, I ended up going to, over the course of four years, I went to three different schools and just learned a holistic way of eating without my husband having to be on seven prescription drugs for the rest of his life. This is our journey. This is not your journey. This is no one's journey but ours. But I want to inspire you, encourage you with these very simple eight steps that you can do in your house starting today. So let's talk about the first one. I'm gonna look over at my notes every now and then because I do not wanna miss anything. But um, so first off, healthy eating is a journey. You know, every, we are always changing. That's the number one step in the eight steps. Healthy eating is a journey. There is no destination. You can't find one way of eating and then bam, you eat that way for the rest of your life. Hi, Colorado. I love seeing the people all over the, the country. This just makes my heart so happy. Um, so <clears throat> it's a journey, right? It's not a destination. We don't get there. And what I mean by that, so if you think about it, what our bodies are ever changing. Our environment is changing. Our hormones are changing. Our work environment is changing. Our age is changing. When that happens, different foods affect us differently. Different diets stop working. When those happen, we have to go back and rely on the basics, which is what I am here to help you with. So ever changing, and something else that changes over time is taste buds. As you start aging, and at, not start, but as you age, and as you clean up your diet, your taste buds begin to change. So I encourage you through this, ever going journey that you assess foods that you think you didn't like before. So if you hated mushrooms a year ago, but you've really worked on cleaning up your, the foods that you eat, maybe revisit mushrooms because your body craves the healthy foods. Once you get all those preservatives, once you get all that packaged food, and once you get all that stuff off your taste buds and out of your system, your body really starts craving those good foods. So number one is healthy eating is a journey. It's ebbs and it flows and that is okay. Number two, it is not about deprivation. When I first started attending the first nutrition school I went to, I learned very quickly that it is not about depriving yourself of the foods that you can't have. I don't like that phrase, I can't have this. 
it's a mind game, right? We have to tell our minds how to think. And if we're saying these words out loud, I can't have this, then you're not going to want to have it. And you're, I mean, you're really going to want to have it. So something that I learned in school is a phrase that they taught us called crowding out. What that means is you not, don't think of it as foods that you're giving up, but as you start introducing healthier foods into your diet, those unhealthy foods, those overly processed foods, those inflammatory foods, we start crowding them out because we're filling our pantries, we're filling our fridge, and we're filling our plates with the foods that are better for us so that other stuff gets crowded out. So that's number two. It's not about the deprivation. It's about feeding your body what you, what you should be eating and what's gonna nourish your body instead of thinking, ah, oh, I can't have that anymore. All right, third one. Now you're gonna laugh, but this literally changed my life. Drink more water. I know it sounds so simple, but I have to tell you a personal story. One of my very best friends, she and I were talking two weeks ago and she informed me, I don't know how I didn't know this, because we talk daily, she never drinks water. And she was complaining to me about a headache for four days, sinuses, all of these things. And I said, well, up your water intake. She's like, well, I don't drink much water at all. I'm like, huh? So here it is, a person right next to me in my own life doesn't, doesn't take that into account and doesn't practice that. So I'm here to tell you, drink more water. If you have a headache, it could be dehydration. If you are dizzy, it could be dehydration. If, you're, if you don't have enough energy to get you to 8 p.m., you might need more water. Let me give you an elementary analogy. Your body has all these working parts on the inside. We call them organs, the bloodstream, all of these different things. Water is the lubrication that keeps those things functioning. You can't have a filtration system. You can't have a digestive system, an immune system, a cardiovascular system without lubricating everything and letting and flushing all your toxins out. So here's a little rule of thumb. I talk about it often, but here's a refresher course. When you're first starting your water journey, the goal in your mind should be double your ounces of water as what you weigh. If you weigh 100 pounds, you want to drink 50 ounces of water a day. That's just a goal. Are you going to hit it every day? No. Do I hit it every day? No. But what I'm here to tell you, it's a very easy number to remember because you know how many water bottles you're grabbing. You know how many ounces your water cup has in it. How many times have you filled it up today? In your mind, just think about that. Water is everything. So up your water. Number four, I'm gonna flip my little page over. Diets do not work long term. Doesn't matter what diet it is. I don't care what diet you're on, have been on, have tried. You may be on here and you've done every diet since 1982. That's okay. That's okay. That is your journey and that is fine. But I'm here to tell you, if you keep trying these new diets and you keep doing them short term, your body is very, very confused. So, you know, there's a lot of companies that come out every couple of years. There's a company comes out with a new and improved way of dieting and way of products to buy so they can make money. And what you're doing is really setting yourself up for an inconsistent, unsustainable lifestyle. So I really am anti-diet. I am just very pro eating real food and learning how to prepare real food in your kitchen. That is the most sustainable diet that you can be on. When my husband and I cleaned up our diet after his heart attack, we weren't trying to lose weight, but we both lost. I lost 15 pounds and he lost 40. And it was because we were eating real food that didn't contain a bunch of packaged food, right? So number four, diets don't work. Number five, Food is a tool. Is it fun? Yes. Do we enjoy food? Of course, we eat with emotion. Do we eat with our taste buds most of the time? Of course, we want it to taste good. But I would love for you, challenge you, to think about food as a tool. I'm gonna just change the camera a little bit there so you don't need to see that big old thing that long. Okay, so it is a tool. And so when you go to buy your groceries, or actually better than that, when you go to make a meal, this is what I do. I'm not saying that this would work for you, but I'm just trying to encourage you and inspire you to try at least one of these steps going forward in your own home. But food is a tool. So let me give you a little example. Pre-heart attack, my husband had a heart attack in 2014. Pre-heart attack, this is how I thought about making food. I find a recipe, usually on Pinterest, 
I buy the ingredients and I make the recipe. Bam, that was the extent of what I put in, the thought that I put into what we, I was feeding us. My job was to feed humans. Now, I see it as a tool. For example, here's what I do today. And it takes practice, but now it's just a habit for me. I, I, I wrote these down so I don't forget. I pick a well-sourced protein. That's where I always start when I'm planning my meals. What proteins do I wanna cook this week? How many meals am I gonna cook this week? By the way, I teach a whole class on meal prepping, prepping and planning. We won't go into that today, but you can learn more about it on ShellyCanHelp.com. Um, I, I like to mix it up throughout the week. I don't wanna have salmon for four lunches. Like I get very bored. When I get bored, I revert to processed foods. So I try to change up my flavors every single day. Now I might repeat something three days later, but I do not ever eat back-to-back -back recipes because boredom reverts to bad choices. So then after I pick a well-sourced pr protein, I add a veggie or two. So when I add the veggie or two, I always change up the flavors. I talk with my hands a lot. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna just sit on them. I'm gonna sit on my hands. <laughs> when I'm not in the kitchen cooking, I don't know what to do with my hands. <laughs> okay. So um, then I decide, like when I'm making my recipes, the condiments are important. I want to choose good oils. I have a whole soapbox lesson on what oils to cook with, what oils not to cook with. Um, what condiments am I gonna use? Am I gonna buy store-bought? If I am gonna buy store-bought, because I'm in a hurry, what kind of ingredients do those condiments have? So these are the kind of things I think of every single week when I am making a recipe. Um, and then the last one is I top it off. There's my little secret sauce that I do with every recipe I make, even breakfast. I say to myself when I'm either in the prep work or in finishing the recipe, how can I add one more nutritious element to this recipe? For instance, if I'm making, um, like today, I, did, I was doing a video for social media, by the way. I'm, I just did uh, bananas in the air fryer. That recipe video is coming soon. At the end of it, I was like, what can I top these bananas with? One more thing that's gonna add a little bit more protein, or maybe I needed more fiber. And then I'll add like hemp seeds, crushed up nuts. Um, I'll take spaghetti, like if I have spaghetti sauce, I'll grind up spinach and throw it in there as one more element of fiber. So every time I make a meal, even if it's my own recipes, by the way, I have a cookbook coming out in October. Even if it's my own recipes, I try to add in one more element of nutrition into that recipe. Just top it off. You know, kind of like you put chocolate syrup on a sundae. Top it off with one more nutrient-dense product. Add some crushed nuts to your salad. Put some hemp seeds in your smoothie. Can't taste them. So that's one element that I do is I always try to use food as a tool and think about the nutrients when I'm creating, making, or shifting a recipe that I found online. Um, okay, so there's that. Now we are on to number six. How are we doing on time? We're good. Okay, we're doing really good actually. Um, six, it is okay to still indulge. Indulge, it's okay. I go by the 80-20 rule, 80% 80 of the time. I really try to eat well and I tried to feed my husband and I well because we feel so much better when we do it. And then 20% of the time, we eat what we want. So when I say that, I like to use this phrase, this is a really good tip that I've really implemented in our house and it helps a lot. Plan your weak moments. And what I mean by that is if you have a, if you know on Thursday, and I know I'm talking to some of you, that you're going to go to have wine with your girlfriends on Thursday, Monday through Wednesday, try to eat some really good stuff. Drink a ton of water. So on Thursday night, you can have the wine, you can have the cheese board, do what you want and you're not, you don't feel so restricted. So I, I like to tell people, plan your week moments if you can. It can't always be, it cannot always be that way. Um, you know, if you have emergencies or schedules change, I get all that. But if you have a study routine and you're able to, Plan your week moments. Oh, I'm so glad that you're excited for my cookbook. Thank you, Coffee Chat Girl. Um, okay, uh, let's see. Number, so in, in your mind, my 80-20 my rule is 80% of the time I try to eat Shelly Can Help Approved. 20% of the time I, I plan it for those weekends and nights out and things like that. And so if you're not at the 80-20 mark yet, totally fine. Go 50-50, go 60-40. Show yourself grace, but start somewhere so you have a plan. 
Number seven, the last two are the most important to me by far. And if you ha have listened to me talk and talk and rant and rant for a while, you are very clear on where I stand with these last two, but they're always a good refresher. Number seven, food labels are everything, everything. If you don't know what you're eating, how are you going to get healthy? How are you going to fix that ailment, that illness, that disease, that sickness, that chronic condition if you're not reading the ingredients that you're putting in your recipes and on your plate? We have got to get better at owning and re being responsible for what we are putting in our own body. We can't blame others anymore. We can't just assume that a food is healthy because it has the word natural on the front of it. So <clears throat> when you're reading a food label, I, can, I have a whole class on this. When you're reading a food label, you do not wanna spend any time looking at the front of the label. For instance, if it's a box of crackers and on the front it says fortified fiber, ignore that. Fortified is a horrible word and you wanna put it back on the shelf. But what I'm here to tell you is stop reading the gimmicks. It's like a billboard on the front of the package. They're trying to catch your eye. They're using words and slogans that are gonna make you think it's good for you. Ignore it. I don't care if it says seven servings of spinach. Don't listen to it. Ignore it. Flip it over and read the, every package legally has to tell you what's in it. It's called an ingredient list. Pay attention to the ingredient list. I'm not gonna go into details with that. I have wonderful classes that teach you how to read a food label. <clears throat> it's super important. What I want, one thing I want you to take from number seven is to really stop reading the nutrition facts. When we stop worrying how many carbs are in it, how many grams of sugar are in it, how many calories are in it, and we shift our focus over to that ingredient list, guess what? Those nutrition facts, they take care of themselves. It's pretty amazing. When you know what you're eating and you know what to look for and you know what to avoid, all of that other stuff, it just takes care of itself. It's, I'm trying to keep it easy for you. Now, if you are a type one diabetic, if you are counting macros for a weight competition, this is not, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the everyday person who has to cook meals for them and their family who just wanna eat a little healthier and they're overwhelmed. It can be overwhelming. So number seven is learn how to read a food label, know what you're putting in your body, and if you don't know where to start and you don't know what ingredients are bad and good, stick with me and we're gonna, I'm gonna lead you to number eight. Now, number eight was a journey for me. Number eight was not something that I learned the first year in nutrition school. Um, number eight was not at the forefront of my mind until about 2000, probably 2019, probably 2019. I had an aha moment and I don't, I don't remember or recall exactly where it was, but it's like all the light bulbs just came on and like the breaker switch had been turned back on and all the, the, the blinders and the veil had been lifted and I, and I connected all the dots. And I was like, it's the answer to everything health related, everything. And that is chronic inflammation. So I never made connected the dots between what, how, what you're eating 1000% controls how you feel, act, think. And when we are putting inflammatory foods, of course not on purpose, sometimes if you're having a bad day, but when we're eating inflammatory foods and we don't know they're inflammatory, our body on the inside is like running man, running man on a treadmill. It can't, it's just constantly working, constantly fighting that chronic inflammation. So what happens is your body is, spending so much energy and your immune system is trying so hard to fight off the inflammation that it can't work for you in other ways. So your body starts breaking down. So what happens is it's fighting for chronic inflammation. What it should be doing is keeping the viruses away. What it should be doing is giving you energy. What it should be doing is not giving you type two diabetes. What it should be doing is fighting off all of the things that are headed your way. 
but instead your body is fighting, fighting, fighting that chronic inflammation. So I just wanna encourage you to um, really assess maybe what foods you're eating. A food journal is great, it's a great idea. Um, just so you know what you're eating, what foods cause inflammation. Did you know that there are foods that actually reduce chronic inflammation? Did you know that chronic inflammation is the root of all disease, sickness, illness, chronic condition? Without chronic inflammation, we would be a bill of health. Our bodies get inflamed and our bodies get weak and our cells break down and then all those things happen over time because it can only fight the chronic inflammation for so long. So what I'm here to tell you is, let's learn how to have that perfect balance of reducing inflammatory foods and increasing the anti-inflammatory foods. You can't just do one. You can't just eliminate inflammatory foods and think everything's gonna be great. You've gotta give your body what it needs to help fight that inflammation because food isn't the only thing that causes it. Toxins in the air, lack of sleep, stress, all of those things, pesticides, all of those things cause chronic inflammation. We can't always control all of those, but you know the one thing we can? Ding, 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 ding what we eat every single day. So when you're eating, the three meals a day is what we usually pay attention to, but like, what are you snacking on at 3 p.m.? Is it a packaged snack where, have you read the ingredient list? Do you know what's in it? Things like that. So um, I don't know if you know, and I don't know if you've seen, but I have a 30-day chronic inflammation challenge that starts Friday. I had 69 people do it back in February, I think, or April, it was April. Um, and it, they got, they had so, they le learned so much. So what it is, let me just explain to you really quick because it kind of sounds like it could be overwhelming and it's not. It's just 30 days of me sending you little nuggets of information, 30 days of me giving you lists. Like I give you, what are all the names of sugar? Um, I tell you what dairy substitutes can you do? I tell you what foods cause inflammation. I tell you what foods reduce inflammation. I give you two to three recipes a week for a month for you to practice in your own kitchen. There is no time frame. You do not have to do step one on day one at all. It's I just giving you 30 days worth of valuable content. You consume it and you read it and you learn it and you make it at your own leisure. You have access to it for a year. You can download everything, print off the recipes and put them in your kitchen. It is a 30 day challenge that starts this Friday. You don't have to start Friday if you're on summer vacation. Start it in September if you want but it's, it, the doors are open and they close on Friday. And the class, if you wanna learn more about it, just go to and sign up, um, shellycanhelp.com forward slash challenge. Every week, I'm gonna give you a whole week's worth of stuff so you can soak it all in in one day. You can take six months to soak it in. You can rewatch it. You can relearn. You can make the recipes as much as you want. Those are for you to keep. And I just, my whole, um, my whole point behind the challenge and why I did it like a 30 day thing was I wanted to, I wanted to kind of encourage you. If you need a little encouragement on Wednesday, you got some. If you need a little encouragement on Friday, you got some. If you're good, save it for a rainy day. Save it for when you're not good. It's not expensive. It's less than a hundred dollars and it's 30 days of content all about chronic inflammation because all those other seven steps, you're gonna tackle if you learn the chronic inflammation step. You have to learn that first and then start your journey, right? So if you have any questions about that, um, and if you, by the way, I just saw someone, oh my gosh, someone just put in there and it said it was worth, she said it was worth it. She attended the last time. Thank you for saying that. Like it, I truly, I'm passionate about it because I saw the results and I have testimonial after testimonial and you can go to shellycanhelp.com slash challenge and read some of those testimonials because I, I, I help change these women's lives in a positive way because knowledge is power. And I, just a little bit of accountability goes a long way. And sometimes we just need somebody to hold our backs and say, I got you, I got you. So I want you to know if you're watching this, even if you're not watching the live and you're watching this later, I want you to know I've got you and I support you and I'm here for you. Anything that you need food related, I'm here. If you have a private message you wanna send me, send it to me. I will answer any questions that you have. If something private, DM me, email me. I wanna to talk to you because I wanna help you. My husband's life was spared and I feel so blessed and I feel like I'm on this path and I have a duty. 
and I have a duty to educate people because no one else is doing it. The government is not doing it. The medical industry is not doing it. And food is such a wonderful tool. We got to know how to use it and we got to know what to look out for and no one's going to teach us, but I want to do that for you. So go to shellycanhelp.com forward slash challenge, read the testimonials, read what all you get. I tell you everything that you're going to get for 30 days. It's really great content. It should be a lot more expensive. So if you have any questions, let me know. And if there's any questions, will you ask them in the chat? I know I only have a few people on live right now, but um, if you have any, I would love to answer them at this time. I'll just give it like a minute or so. I've never done a Q&A on live on Instagram. So, and by the way, if you want to hear this all over again, if you missed something or you logged in halfway through at seven o'clock, I am going to go live on Facebook. So just go to Shelly can help page on Facebook and I'm going to do this all over again at 7 p.m. It's live. So I'll probably give you different information. So if you missed something on this one, please go over there and watch it again. And thank you for commenting. Thank you for your support. Every thumbs up, every heart you give me on Instagram, every comment you say on my videos, every time you tell me that you, something helped or you learned something, do you know how much joy I get from that? I'm being selfish right now. Please do that because I get so much joy to hear the positive things. And if I, if you need, if I need to work on something, you can tell me that too in a nice way. I'm very sensitive. Um, all right, I'm going to go for now. But if you have questions, um, email me or message me. And I would love for you to join me in the challenge. Shellycanhelp.com forward slash challenge. I gotta go. I'll talk to you later, but I have one question before I do. What is on your fork? Bye everybody.